I'm here with Russ Shields, one of the leaders of ITS. Mr. Shields is chair of Wycomi. In 2008, to recognize his 40 years defining new industries, the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business awarded him the Distinguished Alumni Award in Entrepreneurship. He is a board member of the ITS World Congress, founding board member of ITS America, and former chair of the TRB Communications Committee. Mr. Shields was convener of ISO TC204 Working Group 16 and is now chair of the ITU Organized Collaboration on ITS Communication Standards. He received the 1998 SAE Delco Electronics ITS Award, was named an SAE Fellow in 2007, was inducted into the inaugural class of ITS America's Hall of Fame in 2008, and in, 19, in 2010 was named the inaugural U.S. member of the ITS World Congress Hall of Fame. Um, Mr. Shields, we're moving into an era of connected vehicles. What do you see as the main challenges to achieve a breakthrough of vehicle, of vehicle connectivity? Well, the first problem that we've had for decades now has been the difficulty in creating business models that are effective on large scale. Uh, many of the participants in ITS have been small companies and advisory organizations who have been looking at uh, small areas. The few large companies that have been participating in ITS have primarily been doing it as part of specialized traffic management or automotive activities where they have many other businesses. In the last few years we've moved slowly forward in succeeding in attracting the participation in some of the ITS activities by more large companies working in the core of the ITS future business areas. For now we have a lot of progress on technology. We generally know many things that will improve the productivity of people by reducing uh, traffic congestion, by improving freight movement, and most important, we can move further along on reducing deaths and injuries to people who um, are unfortunate victims now of traffic accidents, many of which are caused by very short-term mistakes that they should not be punished for. However, we still have many years to go. There's a lot of efforts that need to be brought together to make ITS a truly large business area that reaches the needs of the public and the businesses that use transportation. I've seen many things that have been progress over the more than 25 years that I've been involved in ITS and I look forward to another set of improvements that as we go forward over the next 25 years that we will see most of our ideas and expectations being brought into widespread deployment. Everybody agrees on the importance of standardization to achieve effective deployment of ITS. Um, most people feel that they lack knowledge on processes, achievements, and current work items. Um, Mr. Shields, what do we have and what do we need? We have a lot of activities in standardization. Uh, much of it has taken place at the ISO level um, and ISO TC204. Um, we have many things that have been done in Europe in SEN TC278. Um, for the last few years, Etsy has been involved in working on some of the communications related standards. Unfortunately, the participation in these activities, again, have been primarily um, people from small companies, consultants, advisory people, some of them fortunately have been funded uh, by government agencies which has allowed some 
participation. However, we have very much lacked the full participation, again, of the major corporations that will lead um, the actual large-scale uh, deployment of ITS. Because of that, we have a number of standards which are oriented towards specific proprietary technology of individual companies. And until we are able to get the full participation of the major corporations, we are not going to have standards that will effectively support um, the wide-scale rollout of ITS technologies. Well, Mr. Shields, vehicle-to-infrastructure communication will deliver important services in the future for the driver, passenger, the traveler, and the infrastructure operators. What would you advise an infrastructure operator to do to benefit from this development? Well, my first piece of advice would be to stop using proprietary technologies for wireless communications. The evolution of cellular technology particularly for data transmission over the last 10 years has moved the capabilities of the uh, public uh, networks that to be able to do almost all vehicle to infrastructure communications and to do that at a total cost which is lower than the cost of the proprietary networks. I was one of the founders of the efforts in 5.9 communications. Um, I believe that it's very important for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. I do not believe that it is an economic approach for vehicle -to infrastructure communications. The evolution of LTE over the next few years will be another further step that way outweighs the ability of things that we can do in proprietary technology. The infrastructure operators having use of cellular communications can do substantial improvements in their information flow and their operations, their ability to understand um, what is happening on their roads and to be able to give the customers their capabilities. The same thing is very true for things like public transit, for police and fire and other um, public sector activities that can benefit from ITS and having good vehicle to infrastructure communications. I hope that we will see the continued movement away from specialized technologies to making use of the widespread availability of very good high-speed data communications over the air that has evolved in the last few years in cellular technology. Finally, Mr. Shields, eCall is high on the political agenda of the European Union and for a long time supported by the Ertico ITS Europe partnership. Are we on track to achieve effective deployment of this service? Unfortunately, I don't think so. At this point, Europe is well behind the U.S. and Japan in the deployment of eCall. In fact, in the last couple of years, even China has moved ahead of Europe in deployment of eCall. The efforts by the Commission led by DG and so and by Ertico to make people aware of the value of eCall has been of great help. Unfortunately, the uncertainty created by the efforts to dictate a specific technology approach to eCall has caused many car manufacturers to hold off deploying eCall in Europe until they understand what's happening. Even though those same car companies have deployed eCall in other countries and other parts of the world. At this point there are very good standards for eCall from SEN and from Etsy. If the European Commission would issue a regulation to encourage uh, the car companies to choose the technology instead of dictating the technology, eCall will be deployed very quickly. If the effort is to continue to 
try to dictate a specific technology, there will be, I think, many more years of delay and many difficulties in actually successfully getting Europe up to the e-call level that exists at this time in the U.S. So I hope that there will be consideration in Europe to look at the standards and to let the market choose the proper way to do e-call by allowing each of the car companies to choose their own approach within the agreed upon European standards that have been promulgated by SEN and ETSI. Thank you for sharing your time and your insights with us, Mr. Shields. Okay.